Hi there. Come on in. This is your buddy Dave over here at Mars X3D. And you've stumbled on to Episode 7 of our 2022 review, where we examine non-fractal images. These are things that we believe are the very best evidence of a past civilization. Let me explain. Non-fractal math is a whole number divided by fractions, like you see here, a cabin. Non-fractal, or rather fractal, is a fraction dividing into a fraction, which gives you all of the uh, textures and shapes and geometries that we see in natural objects, like this boulder. So non-fractal is always a sign of intelligent agency, no matter where you find it. And the problem is, we find a lot of it on Mars. Here's our best evidence of non-fractal anomalies from 2022. We hope you enjoy it. Isn't it nice when something is close in and relatively clear for a change? This looks like laminated and twisted metal to me. That bottom part is roughly rectangular and someone please explain to me how that piece coming off the top center is bent that way. Have you seen any rocks that bend like this? I know I haven't, but I've seen plenty of sheet metal bent in this way, either purposely or as a result of an accident. This doesn't have all the bells and whistles, all the gee whiz factor of some finds, but I think it's a particularly compelling piece of evidence. Be sure to check out Rami's website in the description below for more amazing finds and artwork by this elite anomaly hunter. Now let's take a look at a piece that's hiding over there, right on the edge of the picture, on the lower right. Now, the first thing we notice is two parallel sides, which are the same thickness and approximately the same shape, at least they appear to be. And in between are a number of spheres, and there's even kind of a gear shift knob in there, a stick with a knob on the end of it. So, do we just go straight up and say, oh, look, an artifact? Well, not really. I mean, despite the bilateral symmetry, uh, which is not that great, I would say it's 80%, and the same thickness, that type of thing, there's not enough non-fractal math present here to make a definitive call. Now, just me, with my bias, I would call this a very corroded piece of ancient machinery. But it could be just a rock. My friend, Thomas Mikey Schroeder Jensen, or TJ, as I like to call him, is a world-class anomaly hunter who has been in the fight, so to speak, since the very beginning. And this one is no exception. This is from Curiosity 120, way back at the beginning of that mission. And while others claim this particular anomaly, as far as I know, TJ is the first one to point out this famous classic cube. Isn't that beautiful? An absolutely flawless cube surrounded by all kinds of anomalies. We're going to take a closer look in just a moment, but I just wanted to point a couple things out first. Namely, these three items the arrows are pointing out to you. All of them anomalous, and I, I would say the first and the third one are definite artifacts. And of course there are more in the image, but you know, you got to keep your eye moving and keep looking and see what might be there. Anyway, enough of that, let's zoom in. Now we have found a literal ton of cubes on Mars in the last 15-20 years, but in my way of thinking, this is still the very best cube I've ever seen. 
TJ has made other very notable classic finds as well. I urge you to check out his channel, which will be linked below, Space Link TV, and uh, see what he has, because it's worth a look. Here's another find that Rami Barilan made last summer. And take a look in the left corner of the left image, and you'll see that very curious dome sitting there. And of course, the zoom on the right side. Clearly an artifact. Compound curves, yes, they can occur in nature, but not like this. Nor do they have those beautifully even recessed rim, a flared rim on it, with the little spheres underneath. What was this? It reminds me of one of those attic ventilators you put on the, on the roof to get the heat out of the attic. Uh, I doubt, however, that that's what this is. But another wonderful find by Rami. And while we're talking about frameworks, here's a beautiful one that Rami found recently, and he calls it a bridge. Now, we have no idea what it might have been at one point, but I think the average person can look at this and tell that it's not natural. Here's another one that Rami found in 3480, and I'm attracted by that bunch of stuff over on the left. It really looks like tattered metal to me, but obviously there are other things going on here as well. The main thing is this curved plate with markings on it uh, here inside the box, and you know, obviously stone doesn't curve like this. This, to me, speaks of being a metallic plate that was bent either in the cataclysm or bent for its former function in a, in a factory or whatever it was used for. What also grabbed my attention are these markings on the back wall. Are those carvings? I think they might be, but who knows. Now, by the way, you'll want to check out RamiBarilan.com where Rami has all his amazing finds listed for you. It's a great place to spend a while if you want to get familiar with some real strangeness on Mars. This is an interesting one I ran across the other day. In uh, Nev's GMAC of Curiosity 3415. At first, you might think this is just a stone that's been scooped out by wind and sand. But when you look a little more closely, you can see that it's loaded with non-fractal angles. I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, at least five, maybe six, clear 90 degree angles. It's got that beautifully symmetrical lip running around the outside, and it appears to have been like a gutter or downspout or something that directed liquid. But because of the non-fractal math that is present, this is definitely an artifact. See that big chunk of rock off there on the hillside? That's about four feet square, and uh, we need to get in and have a closer look. We have a large square block, which uh, obviously has been broken and eroded. So is that carving on the surface? It seems unusually uh, regular with the circles and lines and things that we do observe there. And of course, there are the uh, multitude of 90 degree angles. That rock in back of it, too, is uh, a very perfectly formed rhomboid on the end. Makes me think that's also a building block. So, Dave, you've just seen things. That's just geology. But uh, before we leave it, take a look at this. Look up in the upper left-hand corner. The white arrow is pointing out a perfectly rectangular block. Look at those flawless 90-degree angles in three dimensions. So this tells me, given what we see surrounding this block, that these are ruins. These are portions of a destroyed building. My buddy TJ Thomas 
Mikey Jensen, has made any number of very important discoveries over the years. And you'll want to check out his link down below for Space Link TV. Uh, you need to check it out. Pretty cool. Anyway, look down there in the lower left and let's get a little bit closer. Now you'd have to be blind to ignore the rigidly perfect 90 degree angles and rectangular shape in the recessed surface. You know what this looks like to me? This looks like what's called a splash block. What you put under downspouts or places for water is collected or gathered or rechanneled. So uh, another wonderful find by TJ. Well, it sure seems like those are rigidly precise right angles and a very uniform darkness to the entire thing. Here's the problem, though. The sunlight is coming from the left. So it is possible this is just a rather remarkable shadow cast by the upper shape of the rock. That's why this one will remain as an artifact candidate. Martine yeah. Graney always does a great job presenting her finds. She brings her chops as a graphic artist to bear in everything she does. I know better than to use her material, though, so this is all my own processing. What a great find. If you happen to be a proud weirdo, you're already seeing the right angles and three dimensions on the cube in front. And then there's that, what Martine calls a looped strap, coming up over the back. If you're new to the channel, the proud weirdos are those who can do X3D and, and this is the important part, they watch the episodes and leave a thumbs up. We do live hangs once I depart from the Sunrise Command, which you'll want to check out this fall. And dare I mention it, if you click the join button below this video, you can find out how simple and inexpensive it is to support this work by advancing to the elite classification of Proud Weirdo, first class. In any case, Martine has presented us with a solid artifact. My friend, Maria Conciacao Coelho, shared the classic statue head from NASA's Dingo Gap image, which we'll get to in just a moment. First of all, I know that these wide-angle images are tough for some viewers, especially if you're new. The trick is to just focus on those white fusion dots at the top and bring them together like you learned in the tutorial. Then everything will drop into place. Dingo Gap is crawling with anomalies, every one of which has been presented at one time or another by other researchers. Most notable among them is my friend Jimmy Roberts over at the Real Roberts, Jimmy Roberts One channel. He did a bang up job on Dingo Gap last year and I urge you to head over to his channel and find that particular episode. If I can find the link, I'll put it down below. Anyway, let's start right out with what I call the Zulu. This looks so much like a Zulu tribal mask that it's a little bit scary. The fact that it has all these nice blocks around it. Note the one in the background that looks like a cornice. Well, like I've said before, context is key when dealing with anomalies. You might even notice what looks like carving on the headdress. From the look of it, I'd say that the headdress was above ground for a long period of time and suffered a good bit of weathering. And only fairly recently has the face portion emerged from the sand. Now let's rotate the orientation just for fun. Quite the classic find, right? Let's look 
and a few more. This one reminds me of a wall section, rather similar to what we might find in Cusco and other megalithic sites around the world. Is this a wall section or just some natural weathering? We'll leave this one as an artifact candidate for now. As Jimmy Roberts pointed out, you're looking at foundations, folks. For someone with an archaeologist's eye, there even seem to be room partitions present. And did you notice what looks like a door opening right here? I know this is a bunch of blurry junk here in the blow-up, so is this maybe just a, a crack in the foundation? And what about this strange blue thing at the bottom? Again, way too blurry to make a definitive call, but it definitely seems out of place. Anyway, since there is a possibility that this could form naturally, we'll assign the status of artifact candidate. And what the heck is this thing? We've got right angles and bilateral symmetry, so it's pretty suspicious. Another artifact candidate. Is this another screen or just a shadow? We'll play it safe and call this one an oogie. Let's wrap up our review of Dingo Gap with this one. As far as I know, no one has presented this particular anomaly. Some of you are thinking, oh good grief, that's just a rock. And <laughs> I don't blame you. But what about those right angles in three dimensions? Did you consider these three strange aspects? On the left, a circular opening divided into four equal parts, kind of like a, a small speaker or maybe a small ventilation fan. To the right, what looks like a walkie-talkie antenna sticking out. You know, one of those uh, uh, stub antennas. How did this not break off if this was formed naturally? And down below, a circular depression with an even lip all the way around it. There's enough here in this one small blurry item to positively declare it to be an artifact like this intricate block of stone a little further along. Besides all that organized spaghetti on the front, you have that beautiful rectangle and parallel lines on the left corner, as well as more than a few right angles in three dimensions. We'll leave this one as an artifact candidate for now and move on. Here's one pointed out by Martine Graney, and she's calling it a wooden crate with two iron bands around it. This is a really nice find, but is it actually made of wood? And are those actually iron bands holding it together? Am I being too fussy calling this an artifact candidate instead of a full-blown artifact? Well, take a look at these items found close by. And by the way, if you go to the live link down below, all of these are marked so you can see the originals for yourself. Now granted, this is much more badly weathered, but still we have what was at one point a cube. And those two darker bands going around it, well, they're just part of the geological strata. Or this one, 
again roughly cubical with in this case three dark bands going around it. Martin's box is much more pristine, much more a perfect cube. It reminds me of this one I found years ago in the earlier days of curiosity. This hexagonal block has two perfect parallel bands running around the middle. We know for a fact that lava flows will form basalt columns that are perfect hexagons. There are examples all over the earth. Problem is, this appears to be sedimentary rock, not igneous. So how come the perfect shape? Here's the point. As a skeptical observer with what I hope is an open mind, as long as there are geologic analogs to be found in the immediate area, I feel that their presence detracts from the uniqueness of any particular find. In other words, Occam's razor is applied once again in the search for the simplest explanation. Nevertheless, this is a beautiful find by Martine, but because of the foregoing, that's why I'm classifying this as an artifact candidate. And before I make Martine irretrievably upset with me, let's take a look at something else she found in 3549. Last year, I found and presented what I called a hollow isosceles triangle taken at a distance by Percy on its 111th day of exploration. Eleven days later, on Sol 122, Percy got a much clearer image of this anomaly, which Rami Bar Ilan shared with us just the other day. This is a, a lot more clear, isn't it? Still not perfect, but Rami is calling this a pyramid. All I know is that it appears to be hollow, it's a perfect rhombus, and it has structures both inside and projecting out of the interior. Very strange, and most definitely an artifact. Here are two more similar type objects I found over the last couple of years. We'll wrap things up today with a gorgeous cylinder found again by Rami Bar Ilan. You need to click the live link down below and visit his website where you'll find a huge smorgasbord of anomalies, artwork, and a whole lot more from this talented researcher. So I'm calling it a cylinder and Rami calls it a cone. Which is it? When you look at this fallen pillar I shot during an expedition to Bet Shean in Israel, you can see that perspective gives it the shape of a cone, even though we know it's basically a cylinder. So, which is it? A cylinder or a cone? Well, we can't really know till we get there, can we? Here's another ChemCam image created by Neville Thompson, and this one's a twofer. Over on the left, what I'm calling an architectural oogie, and on the right, a projecting cylinder that you can see even in this context of view. Here we go. That beautifully perfect right angle really jumps out at you, doesn't it? Here again, as we examine the geological context, it's entirely possible that this is simply a broken off chunk of sedimentary rock. If I had found this as an erratic, that it's something that's out of geological context, I'd be very tempted to call it an artifact. But alas, poor Dave and his shattered confirmation bias. We'll wipe away a tear and call it an oogie as we move on. This one's a different matter. 
that really does seem to be a cylinder projecting from the surrounding stone. And that curvy formation in front of it seems pretty suspicious too. This seems totally out of character with the surrounding geology. So let's take a closer look. That's really a nice cylinder, and it even has a bit of a metallic shine along the top. While there aren't enough hardcore non-fractals to lock this one in as an artifact, it definitely makes it into the artifact candidate territory. This one reminded me of the classic cylinder found in Curiosity 1264. This one was pointed out years ago by Jim Hopton, one of the many researchers who tend to step on stage for a while and then fade away a little while later. Nevertheless, it is a classic find and totally qualifies as an artifact. Neil Spence is a brilliant image analyst who's been out of the mix for a little while due to some transformations taking place in his life. He'll be back soon, doing what he loves most, creating gorgeous G-Max. But we definitely miss him until that lucky day. Meanwhile, someone pointed out this interesting pair in Neil's G-Mac of Percy 423. That's a beautiful sphere, isn't it? It's got that metallic shine which it might just be the light, but it's interesting to me how perfect this sphere is. Now, bear in mind that the so-called Martian blueberries, tiny balls of hematite that form on the Martian surface, these things are found everywhere. You can find a, a bunch of them just off to the left in this image, but they generally get no bigger than an inch to an inch and a half in diameter. This one's between four and five inches across. So, is it an artifact? Maybe. Take a look at the rock just behind it and to the right. Did you notice this number seven lying on its side? I worked for a couple of years with an engineering contractor down at Redstone Arsenal and all the engineers and science guys routinely put a slash through the stem of their sevens like you see here. That's to keep it from being confused I guess with another number or maybe a letter and it's the kind of precision thing that engineers just love. Now maybe this is just a trick of light and shadow. And maybe that sphere is just an unusually large blueberry. When that element of doubt creeps in, we call them an artifact candidate. But there's more to see in this GMAC. There's something right at the top of this context view that we need to take a closer look at. I think this is marvelous. You'll think that I saturated the color, but no, this is actually what it looks like. You can see for yourself that whatever this was, whether a, a boulder or a, a chunk of metal or something else, it has been totally vitrified. Its surface turned to glass by intense heat. According to plasma physicist Dr. John Brandenburg, the atmosphere of Mars is still humming with radioactive isotopes, in particular Xenon-129 and Krypton-80. You know what's special about those isotopes, <laughs> besides the Superman thing in popular culture? They come about as a result of nuclear fusion. In other words, a very large planet-shredding nuclear bomb. Actually, three of them. Dr. Brandenburg has identified three different blast patterns on the surface of Mars, 
and according to his calculations, the largest of the devices was the size of the Empire State Building, and it was deployed from orbit. Try to wrap your mind around the implications of the science here. I'll put a link to Dr. Brandenburg's milestone book, Death on Mars, The Discovery of a Planetary Nuclear Massacre. I guarantee it'll blow your mind if you ever read it. If there's one thing that typifies Percy's mission so far, it's shaped blocks. I'm convinced Jezero Crater is where the ruins of a city washed up or down, as the case may be. We're interested in that triangular block up there at the top. First of all, seriously, NASA, this is the best resolution you can achieve with 4K cameras and something not more than 20 or maybe 30 feet from the rover? Personally, I think this particular object has been blurred and obfuscated, but even with NASA's tampering, the math still shines through, doesn't it? We have a beautifully trapezoidal block made of the ubiquitous Martian bluestone. For my Iowa friends, that means them bluestones they's everywhere. Look at the features on the right side. Is it hollow? Or is that just darker material? Hard to tell with all the smudging going on. Nevertheless, I believe this to be an artifact based upon the non-fractal angles involved. <laughs> I swear, if they'd just stick a cell phone on the rover, it'd give us better pictures than this. I always love to salt in one of Rami's offerings now and then. Most of his finds are outstanding, and he does a great job presenting them be sure to check out his website down there in the description. I guarantee you, it'll keep you busy for a while. This is a beautiful trapezoidal block he found back in 2015. But I'm sure most of you can see that there's more going on in this one than just that big, beautiful block down front. For example, did you notice this kind of round jar just in back. This reminds me so much of the famous Baghdad battery that you see here. Is this a big Iron Age battery or something else? We can't know for sure, of course, but the resemblance is pretty compelling in my opinion. And before we leave this one, how about those arches carefully rockified and hidden by NASA? Wouldn't you love to know what these are or what they're part of? We find all kinds of very odd uh, weathering and geological processes on the surface of Mars. Here's one that James Thice pointed out, and James, forgive me for misspelling your name in the data box. I have thesis on my mind for some reason, but uh, this this is doesn't really fit the patterns of what I'm familiar with, so let's zoom in just a bit. Isn't that interesting? How do you get those right angle cracks so perfectly? I suppose it could happen. But, you know, with all the odd weathering and other processes we're not familiar with on the surface of Mars, maybe this is a regular occurrence, but it does remind me of one that Sarah Runcy pointed out that we showed in our episode last week. See what I mean? The same right angle cracks, and uh, of course this uh, boulder is a lot more obviously shaped and rounded than the other one, to say nothing of that 
perfect little uh, uh, rhombus there on the right. But uh, I think you see what I mean. I don't think this is a geological process as we come up for air, so to speak. We'll begin looking at some of the artifacts, some of the anomalies that are a bit more clear. Here's our first UGI of this episode, which that stands for Object of Geological Interest. Is this erosion? Probably, but there are a lot of right angles in there. And uh, it does have kind of a mechanical look to it, but maybe not. So we'll just leave this one as an oogie. Here's another one that normally I probably wouldn't show you. It's just too blurry, but you can clearly see that there's been something impressed into this stone or whatever it is as if it was a lump of dough and you squeezed something square into it. And I like those three diagonal knobs with a dash underneath. That reminds me of the numbering system that the Mayans used. Oogie or not oogie? <laughs> That's the question. Is this an artifact or is it a geological formation. Well, I would say look at the two perfectly square pieces on top separated by an even cut and the even thickness of the block itself as it curves. It almost looks like it was a bowl or a bathtub or something that received liquid, perhaps at the base of a fountain. Maybe it was for washing feet. When I ran across this one, the first thing I thought of was a sarcophagus lid, very similar to the ones I've seen in the Middle East during the expeditions that I was on. And uh, there's a lot more in this image as well. You probably already noticed what looked like very badly eroded steps below that green arrow. Could it be natural? Yeah, I suppose it could be, but look how parallel they are, how they're the same height one to the next, how they slant upwards in the same way the stairs do universally for any bipedal creatures. My thinking is that maybe this was a tomb, and those were the steps, and there's a tomb up there. Boy, wouldn't you love to pull that lid off and see what's inside? And before we leave this one, let's dive a little deeper into the weeds and take a look at that very interesting little device over there on the right. Yes, blurry as can be, but surely you can see the metallic reflection of that cylindrical whatever it is that seems to have a lip around it and then an inner portion as well. A cylinder of some kind coming out to the left. And what is it attached to? Too blurry to tell, but we do see definite signs of right angles. Now some of you have seen this one before, but this is part of this amazing G-Pan of 710. So let's zoom in on these two blocks. This one made me stop and think. I mean, look at the one in back and follow that curve from the top all the way down to the bottom and you'll notice what look like claw feet, like a clawfoot tub or the, a bird feet even. And I'm wondering if this were upright on its base and those feet were level, if that's a stylized wing, a pair of wings in back, then maybe this was a bird. Regardless, it's clearly non-fractal. I mean, you can see everything going on with that one. And then there's this upside-down pyramidium right in front of it. Perfectly square, perfect angles, and other markings and notches in it which are impossible to 
figure out from this perspective. But one day we'll be there and we can play with these things. We can write them and dig them out and have a good serious look at them. But until then, this will have to do. Thank you for being part of our 2022 in review. 2023 promises to be a really exciting year. A lot of cool things planned. This is your buddy Dave over Mars X3D. Be well.